let's look at the first graph problem in CSCS. Uh, so what's going on here? Uh, we have a map of a building like this, and you want to count the number of rooms, uh, which they don't define super clearly, but what they mean is that a room is any um, set of connected dots, basically, where you can go up, left, down, and right uh, through the dots. So there's three rooms here, this one, this one, and this one. Well, there's an obstacle in the middle of it, but that's fine. You can get around the obstacle. Um, yeah, so uh, sort of graph theoretic interpretation of this <laughs> is that uh, every square is going to be a vertex of the graph. Uh, and there's edges um, up, down, left, and right from each square. And the hash marks are not vertices of the graph, right? They're not walkable. And we want to know the number of components. Uh, that is, the number of disconnected pieces of the graph. Um, so that's just a way of saying the same thing. But it's a little bit more general. Uh, so anyway, how do we actually do this? Um, Let's, let's see as we could. Uh, components, components, this is what we're doing. So we include the usual preamble. IO screen is good. LL. Let's start with the name. Um, so this is a grid problem specifically. You see kind of a lot of these. Um, I have a sort of standard setup for grid problems, which I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, so anyway, we read in the number of rows, the number of columns, which I'll call big R and big C, and then the grid, and we open the parts. Fine. Um, reading the line as a string. seen that starts a new room, and now we need to um, flood fill or DFS or DFS to fill in all the other all the other um, uh, parts of that room. Uh, so uh, let's start with the DFS. Vector. Uh, we're going to use pairs of rows and columns. So utility gives us a pair, and I'll define PLL, which is a pair uh, of integers. Uh, and so this is a DFS, um, a way of it's two basic types of graph reversal. Um, now let's think more later. Uh, but we're going to use a queue. Uh, so we stick back to starting position on the key, and then This is a good thing to know, by the way, is C++ does have some limited destructuring. So I could take a pair and I can split it up into its components, R and C. That was nice. Um, So they're going in four directions. Uh, so this is another part of my usual approach for grids. So um, four directions are going to be up, right, down, left, this order. Uh, so up means 
negative one rho. Okay, so uh, coordinate, let's talk coordinate system. Uh, zero, zero, oops. Row column, zero, zero, stop left. Row is down, columns row right. Uh, so right is column. Uh, so you can see that zero is minus one row, no column. Uh, direction one, which is right, is no change to row, plus one column. Direction two, which is down, uh, is plus one row, and no change to column. And direction three, which is left, is uh, no change to row, minus one column. Um, this has some nice properties, like if you want to turn clockwise, it's just direction plus one, not four. Or if you want to turn left, direction plus three, not four. Um, so anyway, we'll do that. Also, uh, we need to decide when we're going to check the outer bounds. Um, we'll just do it when we pop off the queue, which will be fine. Uh, so, you check the outer bounds. Uh, R must be between 0 and capital R, and C must be between 0 and capital C. That's not true, and that's bad. Uh, where you've been here. So, also, if there's an obstacle, we can't go on it. Where you've been here, then uh, ignore it. Uh, and otherwise, just keep going. Um, and that's actually it. Right? We'll keep adding uh, new positions to the queue uh, until we've explored this entire room. And so we go through all of the grid and we explore each room. And every time we see a new room, we can make the answer. Um, and then we just move up. Spaces. If there were spaces, we would just read in each character by one. Um, deck is a good thing to know about. It's a double empty queue. Um, it has uh, push back, push front, pop back, pop back, front, and back. It's pretty nice. It's like a better vector, actually. I might think it's a little uh, slower than vector. There's also a queue, but I just prefer the interface of deck. It's also nice to have um, you know, front and back sometimes. Uh, I'll say use it as a stack. Um, 
we are like throwing things on the stack that are out of on the queue that are out of bounds that are, that are obstacles. Um, this is a little bit slower. This occasionally matters, so we could do these checks here except we wanted. Um, yeah, let me also show. So this is a uh, DFS. Um, in particular, we're exploring. If you think about the order that we're exploring, uh, we're exploring them sort of in uh, distance order, right? So if we started here, we look at this first, and then one of the things at distance one, and the other one at distance one, and then one of the things at distance two, and the other one at distance two, distance three, distance three, and then distance four. Um, there's also DFS where you just uh, sort of keep going down in one direction until you get stuck. So in this, if you did DFS, you would just go all the way around clockwise. Let me show that. Uh, usually you implement that explicitly. Occasionally has problems where it overflows the stack. Okay, cool. No problems. Um, yeah, so that's the DFS version. Uh, it's the same thing. It's a little maybe actually easier to code as DFS because uh, sort of the function call stack handles the data structure for you, whereas in DFS or in DFS you have to have your own queue. Um, like you just have to call it instead of like managing a queue. Uh, it is, I think, a little ugly to make everything global. Um, yeah, they have, they have different uh, algorithm properties too, which probably we'll talk about later. Um, but I think that's enough for now. So yeah, this is the most basic operation you can do on graphs. It's counting components. Um, these grids are common, and uh, that's the way to do it with DFS and DFS. So that's all for this problem.